And the word is to Bastian de Recht for the clinic about straightening your horse. And we're going to talk about collecting the horse. And for the people who have worked with Frisian horses already, they rather move the hind legs behind themselves instead of stepping under with the hind leg. Typical for the Frisian horse. So we need to work on collecting the horse, making him use his body better. For example, the canter of Frisian horses is very big and pushing instead of carrying. Also, a Frisian horse is very easy to be very short in the neck. And to improve those characteristics of the Frisian horse, we're going to work with them from the ground. And what we want, we want to flex his back and his hips. And one of the exercises to do that is the piaf. And of course, you cannot just grab a horse and uh, do some piaf with them. You have to train them. And you have to play with it a little bit. The goal is not to do it perfect. But what you do want is you want to train the use of his body. First, we're going to do a small circle in the walk. And we're asking for a little bit of shoulder in on the circle. And we want to make the horse supple. And we want the inside hind leg to step forward, sideways, under the body. We're going straight over there. And what we want to do is we want to stop him for a moment. And we're going to stop here. And for the people on the VIP stage, and you can see the hip over there. And the hip is extending and flexing. But the Frisian is going back a lot with the hind leg. But we want to flex that and we want it to come forward. And we're going to move and show the people on the other side. The hip is over there and it moves in that direction. Extension means it's stepping out, and flexion means it's coming forward. Mm -hmm. 
for stick shims. And we want the flexion that the leg is coming under. We want to train the horse to be more powerful there. And we don't want the horse to be stressed and go into a PF out of panic. It has to be relaxed. Uh, we want the hind legs to move. especially the people who are sitting right next to the horse. And you can see how high his croup is. And then when he's going to do the piaf, then you want the croup to lower. It has to go down. And you can see the hip going from extension to flexion. And why is this useful? And if you do this, if you make him flex, and you make him stronger in doing that, and then if you do this, you can always start from collection. I'm going to reward the horse. And of course, this horse is doing it because he already knows how to do it. And he's not stressed, he has learned this. And we're teaching him to lift up his legs when we're touching him with the whip. And after a while, he needs to learn how to start from this position, carrying his body. And then if this is easy, we're going forward a little bit more, moving into passage. And this is how you can collect your trot. But you can also collect your canter from this. I'm giving him a little cookie. <laughs> Saying hi to the audience. And of course, when you're sitting on the horse, he has some weight to bear as well. So it's easier to teach them from the ground. And of course, this horse is already very good at this, but you start very small. So he's just flexing his hips. And now we're going to get back on the horse. And this is how we teach the horse to become shorter. And then if he's short in the back, we can learn him how to stretch forward in the front. First, we're going to move into the canter. Nice big steps in the canter. And Bastian is not necessarily a trainer for Frisian horses, but he does like this canter a lot. Big steps, very active in the hind legs. But how are you going to collect without losing the use of the back? You don't want to lose the movement of the canter when you collect your horse. We don't want to short, just shorten the reins. We're 
we're going to do a circle and make it smaller. Don't use the reins to break, but use the circle to slow down. And she has to use her legs to keep cantering, but the circle is slowing him down. That's how you keep the hind legs moving forward. We're going to make sure the head is not going down too much. He doesn't need to be short in the reins. Her hand needs to stay in front of her. And then we're making it smaller and smaller and he is collecting beautifully already. And we're moving out of it right now. And for Frisian horse, this is something you need to pay a lot of attention to. Especially in the canter, a Frisian horse needs a lot of strength to collect himself. It's very tough on the muscles for these horses. And you don't want them to get cramped. So you need to keep it very short. So one or two circles are good enough. Let's go a little bit smaller. I want to collect him more. But his nose needs to come forward. There we go. That's it. Now we're going to the walk and reward him. That was good. He has been learning there. He's been collecting. We could open his nose. And then we walk for a while, make him relax. This is how he doesn't get cramped in doing this. Sometimes we see people doing this too much and too long. But if you do it too long, the horse will get cramped and tired, and then it becomes more difficult. So for the people who have a Frisian horse, do very short sessions and walk in between. Now we're going to back. We're going to go back to do some more Piaf. And this is a little bit of a runway to go into the collected canter. So we start from this. He's going uphill and then canter. And then we're going back to walk, rewarding the horse. And we're stopping already before he's going to a big canter. So we're doing only one or two steps. We're going to the walk before the canter is big. And we're going to do it again on the other side. First some piaf, so he's collecting, lowering the croup, uphill, and then transition into the canter. And walk again, just a few steps. And if you do it like this, you will never lose the right conformation in the body. This is way better than cantering for 10 rounds. And do it again. And as soon as the horse is doing something well that you ask of him, always reward, always make sure he knows that what he's doing is good. The learning goes three times faster if you do it like this. What we do want, we want to make sure he wants to move forward. You can 
only do a good piaf if the horse is forward. We're going to canter from the piaf, and after that we're going to canter forward. This is good. This is the muscles you want to train. Very good. And then forward. Because you do want to keep this power and this responsiveness. Next. Forward again. Uphill and forward. Uphill and forward. That's what we want to see. Now we're going to collect. And we're going to think about the piaf again. Oh. We are training the canter changes right now. Uh, it was not what we were asking for, but it was good. If something like this happens, never punish the horse for doing something like this. We have been training this. So now he's offering you something you have been training. Okay, back to the forward canter. And then we're going back. Collect the horse. Collect him a little bit more. Walk. Going back to the walk and then piaffing. Good. Walk and reward. What are you doing? You're going forward. You're breaking. You're collecting him. He wants to be long there. But before you do that, you go back to the walk and the piaf. And that's how you collect him again. So you want to keep him short and thinking forward at the same time. And he's asking if there's any questions. Question is, what if your horse doesn't do the piaf? Well, first you have to teach him. It works best if you already know how to train a horse to do a piaf. And if you don't know how to do it, but you do want to try, then you don't really have to do a piaf, but you need to use the concept of that. So you're going to collect your canter, you're going to the walk, or you stop him, and then immediately go forward again. So after collecting him, going forward again is the same principle. You can even use going backwards for the same effect. So first you move backwards, the hips will flex, and then move forward. The goal is that you don't want to shorten the reins and hit the brakes all the time, but you're using the exercises to learn him how to collect. Um, asking if there's more questions. No more questions? And we're going to change rain. You want, in the end, you want the horse to carry himself. You want to make the horse dance. But that, you need to learn him how to collect to do this.
and collection is not going slow. Actually, collection is the result of a lot of impulsion, a lot of willingness to move forward. So instead of pushing himself forward, we want the horse to carry himself and to move upward. And instead of moving horizontal, we want the horse to move vertical. And if you only hit the brakes and slow him down, you will lose your impulsion and his willingness to move forward. And after slowing down, you always want to go forward again. So you collect him and then he needs to move forward again. So with your hand you're asking for 10% of slowing down, but with your legs you're asking for 20% of moving forward. You want to slow down a little bit and then hit with the legs. Now we want to use our legs without him moving forward faster, but we want him to stay in the same place. So first we're asking him to move forward and take bigger steps, and then later on we're asking him to move forward, but not taking bigger steps. So that's where he will go upward. Slowing down, going forward, slowing down, forward, and then slowing down and upward. And now forward again. Let's do it again on the other side. giving him a little bit of length in the reins. Slowing down, then we go forward. Slowing down, and now upward in the movement. And forward again. Let's do a diagonal and extend the trot. And after collecting the horse, you could, you should always go forward as well. Extend the trot. And the energy you have in the extended trot is the same energy you want to have in your collection. It takes very small steps to get there, of course. I'm going to work from the ground again. Okay, we're going into the trot. Move a little bit forward. No canter, back to the trot. A little bit more forward. What we want 
we want to catch the moment where he thinks about going forward, but he's not going actually. He's staying in the same place. Slowing down. Good work. Halt for a moment. Reward him. And he knows when he's doing good. He's already already coming, moving his head towards me when he's doing a good thing. And we're flexing the hip. It's, when you're doing this, it's easy to have the rhythm and the cadence, but how to go forward again, that's harder. Let's reward him again. Okay, back to the Piaf, and we're slowly moving forward. And now we're going to the Piaf. And the more forwardness you still have, the better he can do it. And we're going back to a forward trot. And please give an applause for them. Bastiaan de Recht. About working from the ground. And the horse is Bokke van Dijkmalia Staten. Great horse, great rider. And another applause for this clinic. Dank ook aan de jonge KNPS, aan de finale, de finale 